on behalf of the University of Wisconsin and Qualys, I'd like to welcome you to today's uh, presentation, uh, Species Differences in the Hepo Hepatobiliary Disposition and Regulation of Bile Acids. And today's presenter is Dr. Kyung Hee Kim. And, sorry, okay. She is a scientist for DIL SIM services and a software developer working with the Dilly SIM initiative modeling team. Dr. Young is research focuses on the computational modeling of drug-induced liver injury regarding interference of bile acid transport, mitochondrial dysfunction, and oxidative stress by hepatotoxic drugs. Dr. Young received her BS in pharmacy and MS in pharmacokinetics from the Seoul National University in South Korea and PhD in pharmaceutical sciences from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Her graduate research focused on defining the mechanisms of DILI involving interactions of efflux of bile acids and drugs. As a result of her research, she has earned numerous fellowship awards. She has published scientific papers near drug metabolism and transport, regulation of drug metabolizing enzymes during pregnancy, and systems pharmacology modeling of DILI. She has been invited to speak at multiple scientific meetings, including the FDA DILI conference and the ASCPT annual meeting and has worked closely with the DIL SIM modeling team since 2011 and joined the team in 2014. With that, I will turn it over to her. Okay, thanks, Eric. Um, so welcome, everyone, to the first of um, this expert series webinar. So today, my talk will be focused on species differences in the hepatobiliary disposition and regulation of bile acids. Um, and here is the agenda. First, I will start with um, a little bit background on bile acids and drug-induced liver injury, which is also called Billy. And then I'll talk about um, general physiology and the species differences in bile acid synthesis and metabolism, transport, and regulation. And because of these species differences, um, preclinical animals uh, tend to be less susceptible to bile acid media Billy. Um, so some of the work I've been involved in is um, developing a mass medical modeling software to predict human delivery um, using um, data from human-derived in vitro systems. Um, so I will introduce some of that work at the end of um, today's talk. All right. With that, let's get started. Um, so for those who uh, are new to this area, the bile acids are the end product of cholesterol metabolism. So as you can see here, on your um, left hand, um, these are the backbone of bile acid, which has steroid backbones. So basically, liver processes this cholesterol to generate bile acid and eliminate it um, um, into the bile. Um, and uh, there are different kinds of uh, or different species of bile acids. Um, the five major ones are listed on here. Um, on the table here on your right, and each bile acid has different number of hydroxyl groups at different locations um, from top to bottom. Um, um, the some bile acid, um, like muricolic acid, which is very uh, abundant in rodents, they have um, like three different hydroxyl groups at different locations. And whereas as you go down to the list, you will see um, less hydroxyl groups, makes this, uh, which makes these bile acids uh, more hydrophobic. So each different bile acid has different characteristics based on their fixed chemical properties. Um, and these bile acids um, play important um, physiological roles. So for example, they promote lipid absorption from the intestinal lumen. And recently, um, their roles as sign signaling molecules activating nuclear receptors have been really investigated and reported. So now we know these bile acids um, play important roles as signaling molecules for maintaining their own homeostasis as well as lipid metabolism or glucose, glucose metabolism. However, if bile acids accumulate highly within the cell at physiological levels, um, they can cause some toxicity. So bile acids um, have been shown to cause mitochondrial toxicity, increasing membrane potential. And 
since the liver is the major organ which is synthesizes the bile acids and which eliminates the bile acids, um, if any of these pathways are disrupted, um, bile acids can be um, accumulated within the liver, causing drug-induced liver injury. And um, as far as toxic effects of different bile acids, um, in general, the more hydrophobic, the more cytotoxic they are. So if you look at the table here, um, the list of cholic acids is the most hydro, the most hydrophobic and cytotoxic bile acids. Whereas if you go to the top part, um, the more hydrophilic bile acids are known to be less cytotoxic. Um, and drug-induced liver injury, let me talk a little bit about this delay. So delay um, can cause um, life-threatening hepatic um, injury. Um, and it is one of the primary side effects uh, or adverse effects uh, which um, leads to failure of clinical trial or withdrawal of approved drugs from the market. Um, you can see the list of withdrawn um, drugs on the bottom, like trogolitazone and lomiracoxib, then really cause, um, like during the post-marketing or clinical trials, uh, maybe this drug withdrawn um, from the um, clinical programs or the market. And Dilly is also responsible for um, um, numerous regulatory black box warnings. Um, for example, drugs like Lucentan and Diclofenac, they have um, black box warnings um, on hepatotoxic, potential hepatotoxicity. So the drugs are still on the market, but these black box warnings um, may limit the clinical use of these important drugs. Um, however, um, the predictivity of clinical beauty is not um, very good. So only about half of the clinical beauty is um, predicted from standard preclinical testing in rodents. And sometimes um, the drug-induced liver injury is um, observed just in a small subset of the patient. So it's not detected during early or late phase of clinical trials, but show up in um, very late in the clinical trials or even during post-marketing, which is another concern um, um, and which is a challenge um, in um, predicting um, clinical um, drug and liver injury. And there are several mechanisms underlying drug and liver injury. So the drugs are taken into the, into the liver. The liver is um, usually the major eliminating organ for drugs or any metabolites. So either drugs or its stable or reactive metabolites um, can either form protein adapt formation or cause oxidative stress or mitochondrial dysfunction. So as you can see from the list here, um, there are so, um, several different mechanisms that can lead to drug-induced liver injury alone or in combination with others. And the focus of today's talk will be bile acid transfer inhibition. So on the next slide, um, this figure shows the schematic of a single um, hepatocyte uh, with localization of um, different bile acid transporters. So uh, bile acid are um, mainly taken up to the liver um, by um, the NTCP um, transport and the unconjugated bile acids are also known to be um, taken up by OATP transporters as well. And once within the liver, um, the bile acids are predominantly excreted into bile through bile salt export pump, the BSEP transport. But they can also um, be um, transported back to the sinusoid of blood through um, vasoreter efflux transporters such as MRP3, MRP4, or OST alpha beta. So that's um, some general hepatobiliary disposition of the bile acid. Um, and when you administer the drug, um, drug also can be taken, in the, taken up into the liver and the drug can interact with or inhibit um, multiple transport processes of bile acid. And if inhibition of efflux processes are predominant, that will lead to accumulation of toxic bile acid within hepatocytes, leading to hepatotoxicity. 
However, um, the frequent species are um, also not very predictive of bile acid mediated toxicity in humans. So for drugs like Lucentan, AMG009, um, the toxicity signal of the, the drugs are known to inhibit um, bile acid transport. So for these drugs, um, toxicity signals um, for these um, bile acid inhibitors were not really detected during um, preclinical toxicology testing, but later shown up in like, human clinical trials for during post-market phase. And um, we know that species differences exist in um, bile acid synthesis, metabolism, transport, and regulation processes, which may be um, responsible, which could uh, be responsible for um, these um, differences in sensitivity between preclinical species and humans um, to the bile acid needed um, hepatotoxicity. And these species differences um, really complicate interpretation and translation of any animal data to human, and thus can lead to poor prediction of clinical daily. So for today's talk, um, I will go through um, different parts of bile acid physiology um, and just go through um, what we know about um, species differences in each aspect of bile acid um, biology. So let's first talk about um, bile acid synthesis and metabolism. As I mentioned, um, cholesterol is a precursor of um, the bile acid synthesis. So in the liver, cholesterol undergoes multiple um, enzymatic steps um, to form choleic acid um, and the um, CA and the kinodeoxy choleic acid um, CDCA. Um, it's a multi-step process which involves multiple CIP enzymes. Um, the the CIP7A1 um, is the um, major um, enzyme. It's a, it is a, um, it's a rate limiting step for bile acid synthesis. And it's involved in this classic pathway of um, formation of choleic acid and kinodeoxy choleic acid. The kinodeoxy choleic acid can also be formed through, um, synthesized through this um, alternative pathway which does not involve CIP7A1. Um, and within the liver, CDC can be further hydro hydroxylized to um, form muric choleic acid. Um, and these bile acids are, again, formed within the liver um, and synthesized from the cholesterol within the liver. Um, so these are called primary bile acids. And when these bile acids, primary bile acids, are excreted into the bile, they will eventually enter the gut lumen. And from there, they can be further metabolized um, by this seven alpha dehydroxylase, which are uh, which are the which is the enzyme um secreted or uh, regenerated by gut um, microbiome. So within the gut lumen, um CA, the choleic acid and the kinodeoxy choleic acid undergo um dehydroxylation to form deoxy choleic acid, DCA, and with the choleic acid, LCA. So these and um bile acids formed within the gut lumen are called um secondary bile acids. And each of these bile acids um can be conjugated um with Glycine or taurine, um, and less frequently conjugate with glucuronide or sulfate. And there exist some um, species differences in bio acid synthesis and metabolic pathways that lead to species specific bio acid profile. On the next slide here, if you look at the pie chart um, on the bottom, um, it shows the um, the bio acid profile um, in the plasma of different animal species and humans. And different color codes um, represent different um, form of bile acids, either unconjugated or conjugated with taurine or different like primary versus secondary bile acids. Um, so it's a lot of bile acids there, um, but um, I don't expect you to read through all of different bile acids now. But um, what you will notice just looking at the pie chart is 
it is very different, right? The composition or bio acid profile within plasma across different species are very different, as you will know from different colors of um, of the pie chart for each species. Um, and a couple um, um important um I think species differences to point out. First, rodents have a more hydrophilic, um, thus less toxic bile acid pool compared to humans. If you look at the rodent, um, um, the, the bile acid profile, um, they have greater person, percentage of hydrophilic bile acid, such as neurocholic acid or choleic acid. On the other hand, if you look at the human um, bile acid pool, it's mostly con it mostly consists of um, hydrophobic bile acid, such as DCA and DCA. So one of the largest um, pie here from human plasma is purple one, which is a GCDCA, uh, which indicates the glycine conjugated um, chinodeoxy choleic acid. So that's about half of the overall human plasma bile acid. Whereas um, if you look at the mouth, um, these um, gray areas areas are all conjugated forms of muric choleic acid, which is a less um, high, uh, more hydrophilic bile acid. So these um, species differences in this bile acid profile, uh, which is more hydrophilic, hydrophilic and less toxic in rodents. Um, this was the, is suggested as one of the reasons why rodents are less susceptible to bile acid mediated toxicity. So even if bile acid accumulates, um, they are cumul uh, accumulating species are less toxic bile acid. So it is not likely to cause um, any severe toxicity in rodents. Whereas in humans, um, it um, has more percentage, higher percentage of the CDCA, which is a more toxic bile acid. So when bile acid builds up, it is more likely to cause a of toxicity. So that's a lot of hypothesis um, underlying um, the species differences in um, sensitivity to, to um, bile acid mediated hepatotoxicity. of toxicity. Another thing um, is um, the species difference differences in the conjugation. So the free bile acids, either primary or secondary bile acids, can be conjugated with different species. Um, but in humans, the bile acids are pre preferentially conjugated with glycine, whereas in rodents and dogs, um, bile acids are mostly conjugated with taurine. So that's another species difference. And LCA, lithocholic acid, is one of the most cytotoxic bile acid species. Um, and um, the detoxification of LCA is different between humans versus rats. In humans, um, LCA is predominantly sulfate, but in rats, um, it primarily um, um, undergoes um, hydroxylation to form neurodeoxycholic acid, which is a, a less cytotoxic form of bile acid. So again, um, when, um, due to species differences in bile acid synthesis and metabolism pathways, um, we see clear species differences in bile acid profile or composition across different species. And moving on to the next topic, um, let's talk about um, bile acid transport. So bile acid um, undergo efficient enterohepatic recirculation mediated by multiple transporters um, and multiple organs. And actually, this um, enterohepatic recirculation is very efficient, so more than 90 or 95 percent, depending on the bile acid species, uh, more than 95 percent of the entire bile acid pool is recirculated. Um, are recycled um, through this enterohepatic recirculation. Um, and less than 5 or 10% of the entire pool is coming from the synthesis. Um, so when bile acid, and let's first um, let's review the general um, enterohepatic recirculation processes for bile acid. So once um, synthesized within the hepatocytes, um, they are predominantly um, um, transported into the bile um, by the transporter. And within the bile ducts, 
um, they are um, the stored um, in the gold bladder until meal time. And when the meal is given um, through the hormonal signal, the gold bladder contracts and the bile acids are released into the gut lumen. But um, that's true for human, mouse, and dog, and other species, except for rats. Rats do not have a gold bladder, which means the secretion of bile acids um, into the um Sorry, the enterocyte will be more um, continuous um, compared to this pulse of um, gold blur contraction um, in other species after meal time. So that's one um, species difference there. And once within the gut lumen, um, bile acids are um, taken up into the enter um, enterocyte um, via um, ASDT transport. And from the enterocytes, um, they are transported back to the portal blood by OSD alpha beta or MRP3 transport. And again, these um, reuptake of bile acids are very efficient. Um, and then from portal blood, bile acids undergo hepatic uptake, um, mostly uh, via NPCT transporters and somewhat um, through OATP transporters. The hepatocytes can, I'm sorry, the bile acids um, can also be transported back to the sinus of the blood um, um, via transporters such as MRP3, MRP4, and OSC alpha beta. And these transporters um, are known to have minor contribution under normal physiological conditions. Um, but um, it has been shown that these basolator efflux transporters are upregulated during plasticity when the normal biliary excretion pathway is perturbed or blocked. Um, and also under normal condition, um, the minimal um, bile acids undergo minimal renal excretion. So the recovery of bile acid in urine is very minimal under normal condition, but that has been reported to increase um, under cholesterol um, conditions. Again, um, that can serve as a compensatory, compensatory mechanism when the normal biliary excretion of uh, bile acid um, is blocked. So this is a general picture of the, um, the bile acid transport and enterohepatic recirculation. Then what do we know about species differences in bile acid transport? First, let's start with um, some expression data of these bile acid transporters. So I did some literature, literature search and found um, two interesting art articles where um, they measure the expression, protein expression of the NPCT, the hepatic optic transporter of bile acid, and the B step, the, the important biliary, uh, biliary transport, excretion transport of bile acid. And they measure the protein levels of NPCT and B step in different animal species and human liver. And they, not, they found out that expression of NPCT on the left. And the BSEP um, was higher in rodents, like rats and mouse, compared to those in human liver. Um, so it seems that the expression itself um, is different across um, species. And there is some literature on the substrate specificity of bile acids for um, transporters across different species. So TCA is a tarocholic acid, and this is a ma major bile acid found, found in um, rodents, rats, and mice. Um, but TCA is one of the uh, widely used prototype um, bile acids. So it's one of the pro-bile acids um, commonly used in those bile acid transport and inhibition studies. And in this paper, um, the author uh, the other, the other um, measure the transport of tarocholic acid um, in membrane vesicles expressing human MRP3 and rat MRP3. Um, and they did the experimentation within without APT um, to find out the uh, contribution of active transport. And they also um, did the experiment with um, um, MRP3 vesicles and control vesicles. So those are all these four different lines, um, what these four different lines represent. Um, and interestingly, in rats, 
Statistics showed an ATP dependent and MRP3 mediated uptake um, in membrane vesicles expressing red MRP3. But however, um, that active transport was not um, observed in membrane vesicles um, overexpressing human MRP3. So this, in this paper, um, they showed um, some species differences um, in um, MRP3 mediated TCA uptake um, between humans and rats. However, um, these species differences in substrate specificity um, was shown to be bile acid specific. So that species difference was shown for TCA, but not for other bile acids, such as glycine conjugated cholic acid and taurine conjugated um, lipocholic acid on sulfate conjugate. Um, they showed um, that both of bile acid species are, are transported by both human MRP3 and red MRP3. So um, it kind of shows the um, complexity of species differences um, across different human and red birds, and that's also dependent on the um, each bile acid species you're looking at. Okay, and then moving on to the transporter inhibition. So um, the uh, inhibition of this step um, um, has been um, investigated as one of the um, major um, mechanisms underlying drug-induced um, liver injury. So recently, um, a lot of papers were published on screening um, a, like this inhibition potential of different drugs and metabolites. And this is one of those papers, early screening papers, um, published in 2010, like Toxide paper, where um, the authors um, measured inhibition potency um, um, of a panel of drugs for human BCEP and rat BCEP. And they plotted um, the rat BCEP inhibition potency on the X axis and the inhibition potency for human BCEP on the Y axis. And just looking at this slide, it seems that um, the inhibition potency for two different um, species um, tend to correlate, but there are a few exceptions here. Um, and in another paper uh, where the authors um, investigated IC50 for three different compounds for human BCEP, mouse, and rat BCEP, they showed some species differences for certain drugs. Again, this is also drug dependent because now we are talking about a drug's effect on um, BCEP transporter. Then, um, MTCP is an uptake transporter. Order, um, of the bile acid. So since MTCP transports bile acids from, um, from blood into the liver, if we inhibit MTCP, um, that will um, play a protective role in terms of hepatotoxicity because now you are blocking bile acid uptake into the liver. Um, and a species difference was observed um, in Bozentan effect on human versus rat MTCP. So on the right bottom panel, um, it shows um, the, again, the inhibition curve um, at different Bozentan concentration in human versus rat suspended hepatocytes. And this is sodium-dependent fraction, so we can assume it's um, MTCP mediated. Um, and the Bucentan was a more potent inhibitor um, for red MTCP um, than human MTCP. Um, in, and in this paper, um, they found out these different species differences um, were due to differences in carboxyl portions of human MTCP versus red MTCP. And Bucentan is one example where the human got some hepatotoxicity but it was clean in red. So maybe these um, species differences in MTCP inhibition could have been played a role there um, in species differences in hepatotoxicity. Um, and now um, I will spend a little bit time to talk about the power disposition of bile acids. Um, so it's been known that bile acids are predominantly excreted into the bile and maybe some 
portion, some friction of it, um, can undergo basal letter E flux. But that friction or relative contribution of biliary versus basal letter E flux um, has not been really investigated. Um, so in this paper, actually, this was, this was some part of my dissertation research at UNC, UNC Chapel Hill School of Pharmacy. And in this study, uh, we employed human and rat bandage cultured hepatocytes. And we characterized the uptake and influx of the paracolic acid, the model by an acid. Um, and to tease out or to deconvolute uptake clearance and visual letter equal clearance, we um, applied some compartmental mathematical modeling to parameterize clearance values for hepatic uptake, visual letter efflux, and biliary excretion. And we did uh, perform this experiment in human sandwich culture hepatocytes and rat sandwich culture hepatocytes um, to see if there's any species differences exist um, in hepatobiliary disposition of bile acid. Uh, I'm not going to go over all those detailed mathematics and data behind this, but the conclusion was in human sandwich culture hepatocytes, um, once the bile acid entered into the hepatocytes, a um, majority, about 70-70% of the bile acid were excreted into the bile, whereas less than a quarter of the bile acid undergo basal letter efflux. And this percentage was obtained by comparing um, clearance values, like basal letter efflux clearance and the biliary clearance. Whereas in rat hepatocytes, rat sandwich culture hepatocytes, it is about half and half. About 56% of the bile acids uh, were excreted into the bile, whereas about 44% underwent um, visual letter efflux. So clearly, in humans, um, the BCEP mediated pathway is a large, larger portion. It has larger relative contribution to the overall clearance of the bile acid, whereas um, in red, um, both biliary and basal letter efflux pathways have about the same contribution. So um, in, the, in the presence of any BCEP inhibitor or whenever BCEP function is perturbed, um, the greater increase is expected in hepatic bile acid in humans compared to the rat um, because it's the major pathway of elimination in humans compared to the rat. Again, these were done in the some um, hepatocyte culture, so it still needs to be translated in the whole um, liver or whole organism um, 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 system. But again, it kind of um, takes us to the fact that um, species differences um, may exist in actual hepatobiliary distribution pathway between human and rat, which may explain the different susceptibility um, or less susceptible, uh, um, sorry, explain why rats are less susceptible to um, these B7 inhibitors um, compared to the human. Okay, and moving on to the regulation. Um, so more rec recently, bile acids um, have drawn more attention as important um, signaling molecules. So they regulate their own homeostasis as well as glucose and lipid metabolism. So bile acid analogs has been developed to um, treat different diseases um, using its signaling pathway. Um, and one of the important nuclear receptor um, that is activated by bile acid is FSR, Farnesoid X receptor. And the regulation of bile acid is quite complicated and it um, happens in different organs. For example, the crosstalk uh, between hepatocyte and enterocyte has been reported, which I will explain a little bit um, um, in, on this slide. So starting from the liver, um, in the, within the liver, when bile acid accumulates, um, they activate FSR, which leads to induction of ships, which again then represses um, the expression of this 7 a one um, the, in, the limiting enzyme for bile acid synthesis, as well as NTCP transporter, uh, NTCP transporter, and it also upregulates.
modulate um, the ease of transporter feedback and OSC, OSC alpha beta, which are not really shown in this figure here. And so it's an this FSR activation is important part of feedback mechanism by bio bioacid. So when bioacids accumulate within the powder site, they activate FSR. Um, and by activating FSR, it tells the liver to make less of bile acid and restrict the uptake and increase the efflux into the bile or back to the sinusoidal blood. So it's a very clever system which um, maintains um, intrahepatocyte uh, intra concentration of bile acid on um, low so that it doesn't really cause toxicity, any um, toxicity within hepatocyte. And hydrophobic bile acids such as CBC are very potent agonists for FSR. In addition to hepatocyte, um, the bile acids um, also have some regulatory mechanism within enterocytes. FSR is also um, expressed in enterocytes as well. So uh, when the, um, the FSR within enterocyte is um, activated, um, it actually um, induces the signaling molecule FGF16 or 19, which moves to the portal blood and activates um, the liver receptor FGF um, receptor 4. And from there, um, it starts some signaling cascade to inhibit um, 6-7-A1. So this is really fascinating crosstalk between enterocyte and hepatocyte because when the intracellular or um, the enterocyte concentration of the bile acid increases, it actually um, has the signaling cascade to tell hepatocyte to make less bile acid. Um, so it's part of, again, homeos uh, maintaining its own homeostasis. Um, 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 in terms of regulation. And in addition to FXR, other nuclear receptors such as um, TXR and CAR um, has been shown to be involved in bile acid homeostasis. And there are lots of different studies which shows different crosstalk between FXR and TXR and different nuclear receptors, which is a really <laughs> growing research area. And um, what do we know about species differences in bile acid regulation? Um, I would say much less information is out here um, in terms of differences in bile acid regulation compared to like other areas such as um, metabolism or synthesis or transport. Um, but there are a couple of different um, pieces of information out there. First, um, nutrient mediated regulation of the 6-7-A1, the bile acid synthesizing enzyme. Um, the data out there showed that during the fasting, a serum marker of bile acid synthesis and 6-7-A1 activity um, was decreased in humans, whereas it was induced in mouse. So during the fasting, um, the bile acid synthesis was regulated differentially in humans versus mouse. Um, and this is more of activation of FSR and the um, initiation of the transcription. Um, so um, here um, on the right, um, the graph, graph, I'm sorry, the figure, um, it shows the um, promoter reason of um, human defect and mouse and rat defect. And there are two different um, the response element, um, FSR response elements um, within this promoter reason. And actually, for FSR, there are different isotypes. Um, and in humans, FSR alpha 2 um, is binds to this inverted repeat reason 1A and transactivates this step. And FSR alpha 1 does not really interact with this reason. So FSR alpha 2 is the main um, isotype or, or isoform of FSR that interacts with um, this promoter reason and um, transactivate um, the DSAP. However, in rodents, both isoforms can interact with um, this responsive element 1A, which means um, um, the both, um, act, I'm sorry, agonists 
for both um, either uh, someone or effort to um, isoforms can activate um, the BSEP transcription. And these um, species differences were due to the sequence variation in these um, response element regions between human and rodent. Um, and so far, we've talked about more transcriptional and nuclear receptor mediated regulation, but transporters um, can also undergo some short term regulation um, by membrane trafficking. So even if the overall um, the expression of transporter does not really change, um, you can um, the function can be changed um, by um, modulating this um, transporter trafficking. So you can um, add more transporters to the membrane to increase function or pull up some of the transporters from the membrane, um, then the function will decrease. So this type of short-term regulation is less studies, but there are studies out, um, out there which shows different signaling cascades that modulate this trafficking of transporters. Um, and um, some species species differences were reported in this um, area as well. For example, taurine um, um, conjugated lipocholic acid decreased plasma membrane version of rat NTCP, but not human NTCP. Um, and on the other hand, the nitric oxide decreased the plasma membrane level of human NTCP, but not the um, rat NTCP. So some species differences are reported um, in the regulation area, but the overall implication of these species differences in terms of um, um, predicting um, bioacid mediated liver injury and its sensitivity that still remains to be um, determined. Okay, so um, now I'll spend a little bit time on um, 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 to talk about um, this um, modeling work. So this is the, uh, we've been working on developing a software tool to predict drug in this liver injury, um, and we've been trying to um, recapitulate the species differences in representing physiology and biology in different species. So and um, by implementing um, species specific bioacid um, biology, we could reproduce um, species differences in drug induced liver injury um, caused by different bioacid inhibitors. So I want to share a little bit of that story here. Okay, so Bilisin is a software um, we developed to predict um, the drug induced liver injury. And the development of this software has been supported by um, initiate members, which consists of um, 17 different um, pharmaceutical companies. Um, and Dilisim is actually a quantitative system um, toxicology model. So it's a multi-scale mechanistic model, which represents um, the hepatocyte life cycle and some cellular um, biochemistry, such as mitochondrial, bioenergetics, and oxidative stress. And we also have um, TBTK model as one of the sub-models to represent um, disposition of drug metabolites, and also have capability to simulate um, or incorporate patient variability um, to predict um, variable response um, to any cytotoxic plants. So in a nutshell, uh, we combine drug exposure and different building mechanisms, um, which is investigated in species specific in vitro systems and interpretation variability or inter-individual variability to predict drug-induced liver injury. Um, four different species, human, rat, mouse, and dog are, dog are represented. And we have different sub-models re which represent different parts of the um, biochemistry or biology, which interact with each other mathematically. And three major meta um, mechanism mechanisms are represented. Um, that includes um, reactive metabolite or oxidative stress, um, mitochondrial dysfunction, and bioacid transport inhibition. And so far, we've modeled uh, different exemplar compounds for a different um, mechanism, uh, and we could successfully successfully predict um, daily potential of various exemplar compounds. Okay. 
Um, the example I'm going to I want to share today is bile acid inhibitors, of course. So in the bile acid transfer inhibition model, um, we start with PDPK model to um, recapitulate the systemic and hepatic exposure um, of the drugs and metabolites over time. And we actually represent bile acid homeostasis. Um, and we have red human and dog bile acid model within the software, which represents a species specific um, biology in terms of bile acid synthesis and metabolism transport. Um, and once you, um, so that bile acid mode model is part of um, system part in our, or system specific part in the software. Whereas um, for any new drug you want to simulate, you want to build your own PDPK and have your own drug input, such as inhibition constants for different bile acid transport. So once you combine that, um, you can simulate altered bile acid homeostasis and each bile acid significantly accumulates within the cell that disturbs um, cellular energy balance leading to cell death and increase in serum biomarkers. So again, um, the system specific part starting from bile acid um, model to biomarkers already um, optimized and characterized within the, defined within the software. So for any new given drop, um, you, if you want to predict, all you need is the PK data um, and the bile acid um, transport inhibition constant. And in the bile acid um, mod, um, sub model, as I mentioned, we represented this in rat and human and dog, although we have more limited data in dogs. So, so far we've been using rat and human models more often. And this bile acid model represents CDCA and LCA species with rest of the bile acids lumped as bulk bile acid. It also includes rest of the synthesis of primary bile acid and conjugation and um, enterohepatic recirculation of bile acids. First transport, transport processes are represented by Michaelis Menten kinetics. It also includes some effector immediate feedback and regulation. Um, and Again, the species specific bile acid models are constructed using available in vitro and in vivo bile acid profile data. And also we have population um, which includes um, the variability in the bile acid um, homeostasis. Um, so we constructed this um, human and also rat in pop which represents variability in different transport and synthesis processes of bile acid and of course the plasma levels of these bile acids, um, sorry, plasma levels of bile acids in human and rat population were validated against any clinical and preclinical data. So that's sort of the background of this software platform um, and I want to share one example where we um, use this model um, and um, this software um, to and successfully successfully predicted species differences in bile acid mediated um, hepatotoxicity. So AMG009 was the investigational compound, um, but the clinical development was discontinued due to hepatotoxicity. So those dependent hepatotoxicity signals were observed during um, the uh, phase one clinical study. But um, toxicity signal was not observed in any of the clinical studies. In clinical trials, um, again, the toxic the liver injury was dose dependent. No hepatotoxicity was observed up to 50 milligram BID. But at 100 milligram BID, five out of eight subjects showed some elevation of serum transaminase, uh, which is indicator of liver injury. Um, and of all of which return to normal upon cessation of treatment. And they print for, um, um, and since they showed, the, um, sorry, observed this unexpected signal during the clinical trial, they wanted to know what the underlying mechanism. So they did a lot of different um, mechanistic investigations and found out that bile acid transport inhibition was the only um, effect, um, hepatotoxic effect that was or hepatotoxic signal shown from any in vitro or mechanistic studies. 
there's no mitochondrial toxicity, no oxidative stress, but AMG um, 009 was um, inhibited um, multi probiotic acid transport, both in humans and rats. So we put together PBTK modeling, and we also collected, actually the, um, the company collected the mechanistic toxicity data, in this case, bioacid inhibition content, and we put that to put those together in our software and simulated um, the hepatotoxicity outcome and uh, compared to the clinical data. And we repeated this for the rats again. So we had, um, we developed a um, rat specific PDPK model and we collected rat data and put that um, together in the rat model within the software to predict the outcome in rats as well. And here is the um, observed versus um, simulated um, clinical data. So plot here shows the time course of plasma ALP. The so elevations in plasma ALP indicates the liver injury. So it's a biomarker of the liver injury. And here um, the red line shows simulated data, uh, simulated ALP profile, and the black dots and lines um, show the um, actual clinical data, and you can see that um, the simulation pre uh, recapitulates um, time course of AOT elevation pretty accurately over the time course of treatment. And the plot here shows the dose response, so y x axis shows different dose of AMG009 and the y axis of PALP. Um, and those response was also. Um, um, captured both from the simulation. And this is a table, um, of summary table of different um, biomarkers. But ALT elevation um, greater than threefold of the limit of normal is often used as a cutoff for the liver injury. And if you compare clinical data versus um, the simulation in yellow box, it's pretty comparable. And note that we did the same um, modeling for the rat using rat specific data and no hepatotoxicity was predicted in rat simulated population. So using species specific data, we could recapitulate species differences in um, AMG009 mediated um, hepatotoxicity. And here is another example that I'm not going to go through um, for the interest of time. But in this paper, um, we also um, um, predicted um, the model also predicted prolytism media hepatotoxicity, which was shown in humans but not in rats. And in both cases, um, the major differences between human and rat in terms of sensitivity um, resulted from um, different bile acid profile. As I mentioned earlier, rats have, rats have more hydrophilic and less cytotoxic bile acid pool. And that's been captured within by an acid model of this software. Um, and as a result, even if the rest simulations lead to some by an acid accumulation in the parasite to the similar extent um, um, to the humans, but since the by acid itself are less toxic, it didn't really lead to any actual liver injury in rats. Okay, so with that. Um, let me conclude. So we all know that animal studies um, are very valuable because they allow investigation of drug effects, um, either kinetic or toxicity or efficacy in vivo. So it gives some insight in terms of um, some physiology and how it interacts with, with each other, which could be um, missed from any isolated system. However, differences between species and bile acids I'm sorry, the species differences in bile acid um, homeostasis um, need to be considered for proper data interpretation and subsequent translation or extrapolation to humans. And in that sense, use of any human drive in vitro system and um, mechanistic modeling can help improve prediction in humans. So this concludes um, today's talk, which is the first of um, the expert series webinar. And I just want to remind all that uh, two more are upcoming. The next one is on Thursday, um, the 11 a.m. EDT.
So um, stay tuned for the next of the webinar series, um, which will be presented by Ken Brower at Polis. So with that, I'll stop here and take any questions. Okay, thank you very much. And I'd also like to point out that the handout is available here uh, on the lower right under handouts. You can download the PDF. And if you have a question, feel free to type the question and I will read it out and uh, he can answer it. So thank you very much. And oh, we have a question already. Can we use AST, ALT levels, measurement in suspension hepatocytes for predicting hepatotoxicity? Um. So that can be more direct side of toxicity, and again, there's a value of looking at um, those AOT ACE2 levels from in vitro system. Um, but I think you need to be careful about translation. Um, and as far as I know, um, AOT and AST are not very sensitive marker in terms of those cytotoxicity assays from in vitro system. So there is some differences between in vitro and the in vivo situation. So um, you have to be careful about interpretation. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, thank you is what I get for a response. So I guess you answered the question. <clears throat> so we'll wait a little bit here for any further questions. But yes, uh, we'll be back with the second webinar in just two days, but uh, two hours earlier than today and then in October. Okay. In absence of FXR, does PXR compensate for its effects? And has this been modeled in the DILISM? Um, so PXR has not been specifically uh, explicitly modeled in the listing. Um, because um, based on the information out there so far, FXR um, is the main contributor in terms of um, this feedback mechanism in bile acid homeostasis, but PXR can also contribute, but we don't really know how much and how important it is, so it's not in the model yet. But if more data is available, um, we can implement it, um, and with just FX, are um, in the software now. We could actually um, recapitulate some delayed presentation of ALT, um, sorry, liver injury, and some of the um, adaptation. So, so far, effects are working um, okay within the, um, for the purpose of um, our model. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, you're right on with your answers. Right. <laughs> So we'll okay. wait here for a second. Does okay. anybody else have a question? And it, don't don't think you have to tie, wait for someone to the answer to finish because uh, they just pile up in a line here. So it's not like they're all going to overwhelm. So if you were waiting to ask a question when she was done, you don't have to do that. Um, let's mm -hmm. see here. Are there going to be any more? We'll give you a few more seconds. Um, but also, uh, I'd like to point out that this webinar was recorded, and if you want to listen to it again or tell a friend, uh, the link will still work, and I'll, you'll get an email with the recording link as well. So I'm not seeing any more questions, so uh, going once, going twice. <laughs> Okay, it looks like there's no more questions, so Kyung Hee, thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, participating in this lecture series, and thanks to those who tuned in, and I hope you learned something, and have a good day. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. Bye.